Hey, it's Nathan, and today I just wanted to go over like how the summer went because a thing happened. I said I got the results for the thing, and uh, I'll talk about that at some point in this video. But I want to go through things chronologically as how they went over the summer because I haven't really done anything to document stuff or reflect on it over the past two months, uh, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's just I'm tired is the honest truth. I'm exhausted. And I probably won't really get a break until sometime in January or early December or somewhere in that range. In between those two periods is when I'll get my next break. Because uh, I'm just back in a semester right now and uh, I will talk about that at some point as well. Um, but anyway, so a thing happened. Uh, and like last summer where I made graphs for the things uh, to document sort of like how I felt my summer went over time. Um, this year I just made one graph to help me talk about the one thing that did happen, which was my topology PhD qualifying exam. Uh, it's this graph. It is fitting that it is a variation of the topology sine curve, which is a thing I should now make a video on because I know way more about it than I used to. Um, so this is, so this graph, uh, represents my co confidence in my topology, uh, in my ability to pass a topology PhD qualifying exam. Um, so starting off, right, is the, like, no confidence at all portion of the graph, uh, where everything's negative. Um, so the start of the summer, uh, I started looking at problems right after the semester ended. I didn't take any real break at all. I was so burnt out on test validation and I just didn't want to do it. So I knew that I needed to force myself to continue to work on passing this test. Otherwise, I was going to just not try. And that can't happen because it's the thing that determines whether or not I get to do what I want with the rest of my life. Essentially, essentially at the time, that was like the roadblock. The core course that I had taken didn't really prepare me for the qualifying exams themselves. And usually in the past with other qualifying exams, so with algebra, um, the course prepared me for maybe like 60% of the qualifying exam. And then my analysis class prepared me for about like 70% of the qualifying exam. Um, but for topology, it was more like, it felt like I had like maybe 40% of the material. There was just a lot of ground to cover and I didn't feel prepared for it. And then also on top of like starting right at the beginning of the summer. Um, so I like got like maybe like a week or two of studying in and then I started teaching and I also had to start doing some reading stuff for my advisor because I wanted to make sure that my advisor just, you know, <laughs> would keep me as a student. Um, so my advisor uh, at the end of spring had given me like two possible thesis topic ideas and some necessary prerequisite reading to do for those. And so I was reading for those, teaching a class and also studying for topology all at the same time. So because I was doing a lot of stuff at the beginning of the summer, it took a little bit of time to get to this place of like, oh, it's neutral. Like it's a coin toss sort of thing. Uh, and that was just the point at which I sort I knew what all of the words meant on all of the quals and what all the definitions for them were and what the major theorems were for the area, but I didn't know how to like really prove anything. Um, and that's when we enter this like second portion of the graph, which is most of the second third of um, summer. I was just doing problems. I was doing as many problems as I possibly could, and I was trying to get the arguments as quickly as possible and not necessarily like think about them for too long. So so for each problem I did, I would spend about like an hour to two hours thinking about that particular problem uh, if I couldn't get it. Usually it would take me around like 30 to 45 minutes to solve the problem if I knew what to do. And then it would take me around um, an hour and a half if I didn't know what to do and realize what was happening. And then I would cut myself at two hours of thinking about a problem. And once it hit two hours, I was like, okay, what resources do I have? Nathan from the future here, I did forget to uh, show show all of the things that I did in terms of like what that looks like physically. Uh, so there was, of course, all of the Twitch things that I did. So here's all of the like digital screenshots of all of that math. And then also for all the things that I didn't do online, um, I have this massive stack of papers. Um, so... 
I, the the legal pads uh, are just like notes that I reviewed from my core class, and then um, all of the the white paper here. Each page, it or yeah, each page to each page and a half is like one problem, uh, and I did over over a hundred problems this um, this summer. So it was a lot of topology, lots of topology. Anyway. Back to your uh, regular scheduled programming of me uh, having some manic flashbacks to all of the stress of studying for this thing this past summer. And I primarily worked with um, three textbooks, which I will put on screen somewhere because they are in my office currently. Uh, there was uh, Monkery's Topology, which is like the standard introductory topology textbook that actually has a lot of uh, good stuff in there. It can feel a little bit um, verbose because of just, it starts with very, very basic things and goes through topology. Um, but the algebraic topology isn't super great, but also I wasn't being tested on algebraic topology, so don't know why I'm talking about that. Anyway, um, so there was Monkery's topology, there was Willard's uh, general topology, which is the book that was used for my core class. And then um, from actually like a free book thing from undergrad, I picked up a um, Topology for Analysts book by Lansky. Um, and I thought I would never ever use it for something that would, I just wanted to have it and I wanted to read it at some point in, in my life. And it turns out that this book was really good at uh, doing some of the more esoteric things that we talked about in topology like uh, filters, ultra filters, and um, nets and ultra nets, but I tried to avoid ultra nets anyway. But um, yeah, so there was a lot of like kind of more esoteric things that were more set theoretic that actually came up in Wolanski that was useful. So like past me, yay. I would read through those books, try to find, find some sort of argument to put piece together. And then of course, there's the wonderful World Wide Web of resources out there. So there's a random myriad list of things that I used in order to study for this exam. I was trying to just be as scrappy as possible, to be as efficient as possible in doing as many problems as I possibly could fit in my brain. And that's why we get this big oscillation because there are days when you work on a ton of problems and it goes great. And you know exactly what to do for nine problems, which is exactly what you need to pass the qual. And it's wonderful and you feel amazing. And then there are other days when you can only do one problem or you can't really do any problems and uh, you contemplate your existence and why you're doing this thing and it sucks. Uh, and then there's the time in between where you're either one, repeating arguments to yourself in your brain over and over again of proofs that you know how to do so that you don't forget them. Or two, you're stuck on the problem that you just looked at that you don't know how to do and it was the last thing that you looked at before you gave up for the day and you just let that fester for for a little bit too long. Uh, so that's why there's so much density of this oscillation of confidence. It's not a fun, fun time. It is probably mentally the, uh, it's the most mentally exhausting thing you can do academically is studying for a test like this because the problems are kind of a coin flip. Uh, there's just a huge log of material that you need to know. Uh, and at the end of the day, you either have a good day or a bad day and you either know what you need to know or you don't know the things that they ask you and you go from there. And so you, there's not really a lot of control that you can have around the test other than just trying to learn really, really well the huge list of material um, and the types of problems that have come up on previous tests. The other thing that made this hard uh, was that I mentioned in this video uh, at the beginning of the summer that I was just burnt out on test validation. So I had a really hard time uh, motivating myself to study on any given day. So it's kind of a miracle that I did. Um, and one of the things that really helped with that, and I'm really grateful, for is that I was able to stream a lot of a lot of my post problem session work. At least for me, it was really good because it, it forced me to study and um, I had a lot of people stop by and uh, just ask me questions or things that also helped me 
test my knowledge of the material. So I did break a hundred on Twitch, which was weird. Uh, that was weird. It was, it was weird. I was just like, I just was just saying math things and people click the button. Uh, and I still feel that way sometimes about this channel is that I just talk about me or math things I enjoy and people click the button and it's kind of nice. Uh, but yeah, so no, I, I really do appreciate if you at any point stopped by and hung out for one of those, uh, or asked me questions during them, or even if they were just like, what are you working on? Um, it was, it definitely like helped me get through the whole study process this summer. And it was, um, uh, overall a positive experience, even though it wasn't necessarily the way I wanted, uh, the way past me would have wanted to study for something like this. So I, so the cool thing about studying for a test like this is that there's usually a point where you realize that you're going to fail or you're going to, or you're going to pass. Um, and with analysis, uh, this happened, uh, about like two weeks before my test, I like had a moment where I was like, oh, I'm going to be fine with algebra. I had the opposite thing happen, which was like around two days before the test, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to do it was not going to, I just had this like really immense feeling of dread that I wasn't going to be able to do the test. And I took it and I left the room and I knew I had failed. Topology was slightly different because I had this like weirdly overwhelming sense of calm, uh, not confidence like an analysis, but just like calm about like three or four days before the test where I was like, oh, I think I can do this. I think this is going to be okay. And all of the like crazy stress of that huge oscillation period of the summer uh, kind of just went away and I felt like I could do the thing. Um, however, uh, when I actually got the test, it didn't go as smoothly as analysis did. So I got the test and I think I ended up answering seven of the required nine problems and then answering half of two other problems. And then the other problem was that I was only really confident in like five of the solutions that I had, four or five of the solutions that I had provided. And um, that sucks because then I let, when I, I, I sat for the whole eight hours of that test. Uh, in comparison for analysis, I only, I sat for six of the eight hours and I was done writing by hour five. I just spent the, the sixth hour of my test reading through my solutions and making small edits to make sure things were correct and rigorous. Whereas topology, it was, it was pretty bad. It felt pretty bad at the time. Um, cause I was just like, so I can do this, but then also I can't figure out these two problems and I'm not super confident in like these two or three solutions that I've already given. Uh, how am I gonna, uh, I think I did better than an algebra test, but is it going to be fine? Um, and so that level of confidence that I had from a few days before just sort of like leveled out. And then it became a coin toss, just became a coin toss of, well, I did more work than I did on algebra, but I didn't do as well as I did on analysis. And I didn't feel, I didn't feel super great about it, but I also knew that I like, I had put in the time and I had this realization beforehand. So I wasn't really sure which way it was going to go. And that brings me to, well, what happened? So I did, I passed the thing. So most people were right. I passed the thing and I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I don't have to take a test in mathematics again if I don't want to. Am I probably going to take a probability class next year because jobs and people should know how to do problem stats because of jobs uh, and going into academia that has math tests? Probably. But I don't have to take a test again, theoretically. And it's great. I guess like the lowdown of where I'm at in terms of my degree is that there's like four requirements. There are, um, there's credit requirements, core requirements, qual requirements, and then your dissertation, right? Um, I am done with my qual and core requirements. So I just need credit hours. I need my dissertation. So I am all, all but dissertation in spirit right now. So I still have to sit on, on reading classes and things like that. But I am primarily now going to be working on reading and research and writing a dissertation and that whole thing, um, as long as I can figure out what that's going to be on. That would be great. I, I again, I do have direction. I have direction, so I'm I'm good, and it's not as stressful as taking 
some test over some random smattering of material on a certain subject area. I passed. I'm done. Hooray. Uh, but I am tired. And that is, that's it. I am, I'm Nathan. This one was chalkless. I am okay, but exhausted. And I uh, will see you next time. Um, oh yeah, and then there's all the other things. Like, if, if you enjoyed this video and want to hear more about my PhD experience, you can like and subscribe for more of these math PhD updates. I also do math stuff on this channel as well, where I talk about different math ideas that I find interesting beyond calculus. Um, so if you're interested in what, what comes after calculus or anything like that, um, I've got videos around on the channel. Some of the ones that are later on are a little bit more higher quality than the ones that I did way, way back when I was an undergrad. It's, this channel has been like more of a slow burn on how often content has come out than the like boom, boom, boom. Uh, that a lot of other channels have. Anyway, it's fine. Uh, I am Nathan. This is Chocolates. Again, I'm tired. I'm going to go now. Uh, have a great day. Uh, <laughs> bye. <laughs>